Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over Ionic Character and um, talking about a little bit more about Covalent versus Ionic, doing slides 9, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So we have been talking about Covalent versus Ionic. So again, covalent being a bond between two nonmetals, ionic being a bond between a metal and a nonmetal. And it, in all reality, it's very rare that they are, it's black and white and you have a purely covalent or ionic bond. There's usually um, a range that they fall into or a spectrum, um, depending on the elements and the atoms involved in the bond and also um, their electronegativity, which we talked about in the last unit. So if you remember, electronegativity, as we go down a group on the periodic table, electronegativity decreases because the atomic radius is decreasing. And then as you go to the right, electronegativity increases because the atomic radius is getting smaller. So one of the most electronegative elements on the periodic table is fluorine, and one of the least negative is francium. The least electronegative is francium. And the halogens are, I'm not the halogens, the noble gases are, um, have no electronegativity because they don't want to attract electrons at all. So this can actually be put on a numerical scale, which you have seen before in the last unit, um, we can notice again that pretty much most of the noble gases don't have any electronegativity. Some of them have a little bit of electronegativity here, but most of them do not. And again, this is a scale that goes from about zero to um, four, um, 3.98 for fluorine being the highest, which is pretty close to four. So again, electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract elect electrons, and um, that can be on that numerical scale that you saw. And if you actually calculate the difference, so you take the difference between those two numbers of two elements in a compound, that can actually tell you if the um, bond is ionic, um, or covalent. And then when it comes to covalent, you can have a polar or a nonpolar bond. You can kind of see that spectrum right here. Ionic compounds have a really large difference in electronegativity. And then um, nonpolar covalent, not much difference in electronegativity, which makes sense because the electrons are being shared equally, so there's not much difference in electronegativity, somebody attracting electrons towards themselves more than others. Polar covalent, there's just an unequal sharing. There's still a sharing of electrons, it's just not super equal. So again, to determine ionic character, it's very simple. You just take the difference between the two elements that are in that compound because they're bonded together. And that's going to tell you if the bond, um, the bond, not the overall molecule, um, we're gonna get to that later, is um, whether that bond, so you have, I don't know, like a hydrogen and a hydrogen, just the bond between those two elements, or if you have something like, um, this is methane, you're just looking at the bond between um, two of the elements in that molecule or compound. And so we take the difference between the two numbers and then we look on the spectrum to see where that falls. So you will be provided both of these items on a test. So again, you just have to find the two elements on the periodic table that are in the bond, take the difference between them, and then find that number here on the chart. So I'll do the first one with you, and then I would like you to do the last three on your own. So nitrogen and oxygen, okay? So we're gonna find nitrogen on the periodic table. So it's right here, it's 3.04. 
and then oxygen is 3.44. So we're just gonna take the difference between those two numbers. So I'm gonna do the bigger number, which is the oxygen, 3.44, minus the nitrogen. So we don't want a negative number, we just want the difference. So we have 3.44 minus 3.04, which will give us 0 0.4. And then you would find that number on the chart up here. So 0 0.4, let me pick a different color here for a second, would be right here. So somewhere in there, 0 0.4, that's above 0 0.3. So that would be polar. So then for my answer, I would say polar covalent. And that's what you're going to do for the next three. Um, for this one, you can take the difference between the same element, okay? Um, so you would just do the difference between the two nitrogens.